Arthur will attempt to explain to me one of the key equations of the special theory of relativity. When Einstein came up with this equation, he wasn't even officially a scientist. The days when he wrote the relativity theory, he worked as a patent clerk in the Swiss Federal Patent Office in Bern. In fact, he worked there from 1902 to 1909. Uh, he was also a conscientious daydreamer. And in his dreams and visions, he soared over the landscape of physics and realized what the fundamental problem was, the nature of space and time. Hmm. And people were beginning to think that uh, maybe there was something wrong with classical intuitive notions of space and time, but they couldn't put their finger on it. Yes. And what they especially wanted to do was to leave alone the notion of time. Why was time sacrosanct? Because it was obvious what it was, it didn't need any more inquiry, or, or they were afraid that they couldn't find out anything It seemed more. that your time is the same as my time. Right. Uh, no matter how fast we're moving with respect to one another. Yeah, there's, uh, nothing, there's no mystery there. We know what time is. That's right. Like it's like Superman said, leave time alone. <laughs> Don't mess with time. Don't mess with time, yeah. OK, I've got a book, if you've got a pen. Absolutely. Right. Let me just, uh, let me show you one of the spectacular results of uh, relativity theory. And let's do a little thought experiment. Uh, suppose uh, here is uh, Matt 1, standing on a train platform. OK. And uh, here is Matt 2, just call it Matt, standing on a train. And he's moving along with some velocity, call it V, relative okay. to the mat staying on the platform. The mat on the moving train is wearing a wristwatch, and his time, call it T prime, and call the times of all the clocks on the platform T. And what we want to do is to compare the time on Matt's wristwatch with clocks that remain at rest on the platform. Oh, they all read the same time. But I'm, I'm going to assume that even though the clocks are at rest and my clock is moving, that they're all the same. They're all the same. Clocks yeah. always tell the same time, yeah. if, if, assuming they're all synchronized. Yeah, one would, one would think so, yeah. And let's call the mat on but the you're, train. But you're going to show me that they don't move? Yeah, I'm going to show you that they don't, convince you that they don't. Uh, T prime and T. And T prime and T. Now, it turns out mat on the train's time, T prime, is equal to T times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. So the time here is equal to something complicated. It's not just the same as that time. No, saying. it's not the same as that time. Your time is not the same as my time. These two times are different, and your time If is I understand the equation correctly, it says something unbelievable, that time runs at different rates, depending on how fast you're moving. Take a train zooming through a station. This equation predicts that a clock on the train, reading time T dash, would run slower than clocks reading time T on the station platform. I've never noticed it, and here's why. This bit of the equation is what makes the two clock times different, but it only has a significant effect if the velocity V of the train is very fast, close to the speed of light. But if the train could reach the speed of light, you get 1 minus 1, which equals 0. And then T dash equals 0. Relative to the platform, time on the train completely stops. This stretching of time seems impossible. But according to Arthur, it's been proven by a practical experiment. Now that's really something, that's wild. And he realized that's because time is a relative quantity. Just, right. as, I, just as I discussed with you. Right. That your time is only the same as my time if we're standing still next to each other. Yes. But if you go away and come back, your clock, although it would be very difficult to perceive it, will read a slower time than mine.